Welcome to Building a Character, where I'm going to be building your favorite characters using Pathfinder and Spheres of Power. Check the description for the character sheet, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for notifications. Time for more anime builds. I think this was the same intro as last time. I apologize for not releasing at the beginning, well not beginning, last week. Uh, I've been able to focus because of school and a number of personal issues. But hopefully I can get back in on an actual schedule and we can continue this. I want to thank everybody in my Discord for really helping me out. I really needed that motivation. But let's get started. Today will be Sukuna from Jujutsu Kaisen, the other part of the Yuji build that I was supposed to do. What are the goals of the build? Goal number one is Cursed Energy just the same. He has more Cursed Energy than Yuji, so we're going to make him a mage this time around. Number two is possession. Technically, it required Yuji to eat his finger before he could possess him, but we're not going to worry about that. And number three is domain expansion. The domains in uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, basically, it guarantees that your attack will hit. Sadly, I don't know of a way to do that in D&D, so we might have to work around that. Let's go to race. Sukuna was a human. Now he's a cursed spirit. Ghost races don't exist. So we're going to make him a demon spawn tiefling. You gain plus two strength, don't need it. Plus two charisma, really need it. And minus two intelligence, kind of meh. You gain fiendish resistance, the skilled race feature, and the shatter spell-like ability along with dark vision. Shatter is interesting because it actually functions to a power that he shows off in the manga. The He's always had the power, but just didn't show it until a certain chapter in the manga. Next will be stats. We're going with 15 point buy. Roll for stats if your DM allows it, as per usual. Charisma and Intelligence will be at 14. The minus 2 will hurt, but it won't do too much. You'll like some skill points, but you don't really care too much for them. And Charisma is your major stat, because look at this man. He's charismatic. Wisdom will be at 13. Having a nice will save is good, and you don't really need physical stats since you'll be possessing Yuji or the enemy the entire time. Dexterity, Constitution, and Strength will be at 10. You do not need them, but I didn't want to dump them to 8 since you'll be possessing character whatever. I'll put a card at the top of the video. Go watch it if you haven't seen that video already. You take half damage from regular attacks anyway, so you don't need to worry about your uh, constitution. And at level 9, you can also redirect attacks to whoever you're possessing, so you really don't need to worry about your constitution too much. We'll start things off with the unbodied archetype of Wraith. With this, you are permanently in Wraith's form, so you're treated as a ghost, but you must possess a character, enemy, or whatever, or you'll take one non-lethal damage that increases by one for every five levels. It cannot be reduced or redirected. You also gain the ability to passively or actively possess willing targets and objects. You can choose a haunt path at this level. I chose the Corruptor for the Death Sphere, and it allows you to possess dead bodies with your reanimate ability. Also, it fits. And the feat at this level will be improved initiative because going first is always nice. Second level unbodied wraiths get a buff to their haunt path. You can now possess dead bodies along with a few other benefits. I won't be spelling them all out since it'll extend the video time and I like to want to keep these videos around 10 minutes or less. Third level unbodied wraiths gain the ability to manifest a physical body. You don't need it. Feet at this level will be strengthened possession for plus four to your active possession checks. Fourth level unbodied wraiths gain another buff to their path. Now, Knowledge Religion is a class skill, if it wasn't before, and stat increase at this level will be plus one intelligence. Fifth level Unbodied Wraiths gain a Wraith Haunt. You'll take Ranged Possession in case you want to possess somebody from range. Feet at this level would be Augur of Combat. Just in case you go last, now you'll add, I think it was your casting modifier to your attack rolls. 6 level unbodied wraiths gain the ability to copy extraordinary abilities of their host during an active possession. 7th level unbodied wraiths gain another wraith haunt. You'll take lengthened control. That just means you can control them longer without worrying about, uh, you know, losing control. And the feat at this level will be Death Knight's Purchase. This is an interesting one because it now swaps your healing to negative energy fits Sukuna really well, and whenever your allies take any form of negative energy damage in your vicinity, you gain temporary hit points. I know I mentioned a lot about this active and passive possession that's on the Wraith page. I won't be going over it too much because it is a lot to go through. But basically, when you want to actively possess, you make a check. If you succeed, you're taking over their body. 
at level 20 you basically have all of their abilities but you're using their health whenever you take damage you know it's it's pretty crazy stuff but let's continue eighth level unbodied wraiths gain another buff to their chosen path you can now possess the undead you can now possess creatures with the undead type mindless undead cannot attempt to save and always count as willing stat increase at this level will be plus one charisma Ninth level unbodied wraiths gain another wraith haunt. You'll take consume host while possessing a living creature. You may spend a spell point as a move action to deal 1d6 untyped damage per two cast class levels to the host. A successful fortitude save halves this damage. The wraith heals the number of hit points equal to the damage dealt, and a creature that successfully saves against this ability becomes immune to it for the duration of the possession. Feet at this level will be Wandering Spirit. Now you have a pseudo phylactery. I don't know how a pseudo phylactery will work since you're a ghost, but hey, do you? 10th level Unbodied Wraiths gain greater possession. When you succeed in actively possessing a target, you may choose to maintain control of the target while moving on to another target. Basically, possess an enemy, jump back to Yuji. Now you have two people fighting along your side, and if you're level 20, you have both of their uh, talents. 11th level Unbodied Wraiths, gain another Wraith Haunt, take Ghost Glide, now you have Fly Speed. Feet at this level will be Necrotic Heart. As an immediate action, you may add your Charisma modifier to a uh, as a bonus to a single Fortitude saving throw. If you had already add it, you may instead gain a bonus equal to the number of Necrosis Feats you possess. That'll be four. The Necrosis Feats get stronger once you have four of them. We'll have four of them. 12th, unbodied, 12th level Unbodied Wraiths. Gain the ability to copy supernatural abilities of their host during an active possession. Stat increase at this level will be plus one charisma. 13th level unbodied wraiths gain a wraith haunt. You'll take anemic possession. At the ending of a possession, you may force the creature to make a will save and forget the possession if they fail uh, as the amnesia talent of the mind sphere. Feet at this level will be between two worlds. You can spend a spell point as an immediate action to reverse your reaction to positive and negative healing for one round per necrosis feat that you have. 14th level unbodied wraiths gain a buff to your chosen path. You no longer need to spend a spell point to possess an undead creature under your control. 15th level unbodied wraiths gain another wraith haunt. You'll take benevolent passenger. When possessing an object or a willing creature, you gain benefits of the silent spell and still spell Meta magic feats. If you already possess either of those feats, reduce the spell point cost by one. Feat at this level will be Life Taker. If you reduce a creature to zero HP or less with a weapon or natural attack, you gain plus two bonus to your caster level per, for one round. The creature must have a CR equal to at least half your caster level. 16th level Unbodied Wraiths gain. I keep saying Wraiths. Wraiths gain the ability to copy spell-like abilities of those you possess. Stat increase at this level will be plus one intelligence. 17th level unbodied wraiths gain a wraith haunt. It'll take dominate ooze. Basically, you can possess an ooze. Feet at this level will be maximized spell. 18th level unbodied wraiths gain the ability to copy the spheres and talents of those you possess. That is the money maker, and if you choose to, you can stop here and multi-class into something else, but we will not be doing that. 19th level Unbodied Wraiths. Gain the another Wraith Haunt. It'll take Moan. I'm not going to tell you what it does. I'm going to leave that up to you to look it up for yourself. Feet at this level will be Mystic Focus. You do have some uh, combat talents. You probably will. And since you're using Yuji's, technically, you have two Martial Focuses, and now you can spend a spell point to regain a Martial Focus. 20th level Unbodied Wraiths. Gain the Restored Class feature. You no longer take damage for being outside of your host, and you can manifest in physical form for any number of minutes per day. You don't care about this either. Stat increase at this level will be plus one wisdom. Now it's on the pros and cons of this build. I apologize for talking so fast. I kind of wanted to get through this one a little bit quickly because I'm working on something in the background related to the next video. For pros, you have free meat shields. You, have, you are incorporeal at all times. And you have some really, really good sustain. For cons, you have a really low health pool, rather low AC, and utility is kind of questionable depending on what spheres you take, but that'll be on you and how you decide to go through with it. I hope you enjoyed. Next time, it'll be the useless pair of thighs known as Ishtar from Fate Go. Don't forget to join the Discord for all of these character sheets. 
and updates should they be made.